NAFS. Where the battle begins. Where the battle begins. Welcome, fight fans, to another edition of NAAFS Cage Fighting. Alongside Ryan Kavanaugh, I'm John Sturmack. We are in downtown Cleveland for Fight Night in the Flats 8. And for tonight's main event, we've got Kamal Worthy taking on George Comer. Kamal Worthy, a terrific amateur, makes his pro debut today. And he's taking on George Comer, who lost in his professional debut, looking to get in the win column. And this is going to be a terrific battle of the striker versus the grappler. Absolutely. Classic matchup. I'm really looking forward to it. George Comer know him personally so if I'm the broadcast I'm biased you know why don't go anywhere we'll be right back the NAAFS brought to you by Tim Lally Chevrolet and discount drug marts the official ticket outlet of the NAAFS the NAAFS where the battle begins At Tim Lally Chevrolet we figured out how to make the best deals in Ohio without worrying about the boss we chipped in and got a bodyguard. Come to Tim Lally Chevrolet today and get a great sign and drive deal on new 2012 Chevy Cruze or Malibu. Thanks, bodyguard. Here's 20 bucks for you. You take out Mike Lally. Done deal. Saving you money on Chevys every day. Mike can't talk right now, but there's one thing he wants you to know. There's only one Tim Lally Chevrolet. The NAAFS presents Caged Vengeance Live. Saturday, August 4th at One Wellness Sports and Health in East Lake, Ohio. Don't miss Bone Saul George Comer, Terry Blackwell, and Frank the Tank Caraballo defends his title. World class professional mixed martial arts. Saturday, August 4th at One Wellness Sports and Health in East Lake, Ohio. Tickets available at Discount Drug Marts or simply log on to NAAFS.tv. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Sports Time Ohio and also Bud Light. Three rounds of the NAAFS Amateur Series Featherweight Division. And now, introducing fighting out of the John P. Lennon red corner, this fighter's MMA record sits at four and one, standing five feet seven inches tall, weighing 144 pounds. Representing Ed Vincent MMA and chose Taekwondo, fighting out of New Kensington, Pennsylvania, Dominic the Honey Badger Mazata. And now his opponent fighting out of the Intimidation Clothing Blue Corner. This fighter's MMA record sits at five and one, standing six feet, one inch tall, weighing in at 143 and one half pounds, representing USA Martial Arts, fighting out of Swanton, Ohio, Mike Velasquez. Your referee is Chad Trukovich. Well, Velasquez fighting out of Swanton, Ohio. I'll give a shout out to uh, a couple of my buddies, Scott Wood and Brian Kale, went to college with from Swanton. Sure, they'll be happy to hear that, John. So here we go. We've got Mazota and Velasquez. And this is going to be interesting. Two martial arts style fighters mixing it up in the cage. Featherweights, usually, John, that means high work rate. Oh, good exchange to start off. And Velasquez is coming off back-to-back -back triangle choke victories. And you look at the, the, just the body shape of, of Velasquez, and it looks like that it, there's a spinning kick by Mazzotto. I told you he's got that Taekwondo background. But he looks like a guy who'd be dangerous on the Whoa. ground. What a beautiful, beautiful takedown. Well, Mazzotto oh. with a quick strike to the side of Velasquez, and he's all over him. And there Velasquez the throws the in triangle. a triangle choke. A huge slam. That's one way to get out of it, John. Whoa. Wh forget technique. That was, oh my God, this guy's got energy for days. And He's now going he for a choke of his own. He locks it up, pulls guard. Perfect position with the leg over. Velasquez is in a lot of trouble here. He's and he out is out. Cold. Oh my gosh, this guy showed everything. Unbelievable, unbelievable stand up. That, that slam. Well, you mentioned the last win against AJ Carl and Dominic Mazzotto comes in with a four and one record, but this John Sturmack was the coming out party for Dominic Mazzotto. He's on the map in the NAAFS. 
Holy smokes. I mean, I have not seen an amateur that well-rounded in, in years. I mean, that's unbelievable. If, if you were to search hard for fault, it was that he got caught in that triangle for a brief moment, and the power and strength. That was like a Quentin Rampage Jackson back in Pride. That's exactly what that was. Those wrestling fans like to call that a power bomb, but that's called getting out of a triangle joke for Mazota. Unbelievable. Wow. And Velasquez is still out. He's being treated right now with oxygen. And that's a very difficult call for a referee because of the position Velasquez was in the face, under the arm, and in the mat of Mazota that he couldn't actually see whether he went out or not. Wow. Now that was impressive. You know, John, we mentioned fight night in the flats already delivers, and in three fights we have two people choked, unconscious. Unconscious. Oh my, oh my. And Jerome, Dr. Jerome Williams is still treating Velasquez. And there's a cut also, which... But, and here's the takedown. Boom, boom. Right to side control, unbelievable, great job. Let's send this one up to Jazz and make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight ends by a knockout due to a guillotine choke at one minute and five seconds of round number one, your winner, Dominic the Honey Badger Mazata. <laughs> I'm standing here with your winner, Dominic Mazota, moves up to five and one. My partner, uh, Ryan Cav, and I were commenting, we have rarely seen an amateur come in here looking that well rounded. Beautiful striking on the feet, unbelievable takedown, and then you went for that guillotine, pulled guard, and sunk that in. Let's talk about that fight. Uh, yeah, I just, I seen a couple openings. I didn't even know uh, he was out. My corner was screaming it. You know, I just slapped it on there. Um, I'd like to thank everybody that came out to me, for me, my family, my friends, um, my coaches, Paul Peterson, uh, everybody from Cho's Taekwondo, Matt Factory, Isaac Greeley, Ed Vincent, um, my sister, my girlfriend Katie, and all my other friends that came out. <laughs> well, that was one impressive victory. We hope to have you back. What's next for you? Well, I don't know, man. I, that's Nicole's job to figure out who I'm gonna fight next. I was supposed to fight Wes Hanson tonight, but he fought last night and he won. It was a show in August, I just won. We were supposed to fight, I don't know. Who wants to see me fight Wes Hanson? Well, I know for one, Wild West Hanson and you would be a great matchup. Give it up for your winner, Dominic the Honey Badger Mazzotto. More NAAFS cage fighting coming right up. Intimidation Clothing. With a focus on quality and affordability, Intimidation features shirts and hoodies for men and women. Intimidation clothing represents the lifestyle and the attitude of mixed martial arts. Be the Intimidator. Intimidationclothing.com Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Discount Truck Mart and also Bud Light. Three rounds in the NAAFS Amateur Series Welterweight Division. And now, introducing fighting out of the John P. Lennon Red Corner, this fighter's record sits at four and one. Standing six feet tall, weighing 169 pounds, representing the Wrestling Factory Cleveland, fighting out of Liberty, Kentucky, Josh, the Romanian Hammer, Prisel. And now his opponent fighting out of the intimidation clothing blue corner. This fighter brings a perfect MMA record to the cage with three wins and zero defeats. Standing five feet 11 inches tall, weighing 169 pounds, representing Evolve MMA, fighting out of Huntsburg, Ohio, Josh the Ox Lessage. 
Your referee is Chad Trukovich. Well, Ryan, here we go. We talked about it when we were uh, when these guys were coming out. I got a feeling this thing's going to be a ground battle, and for people who enjoy jujitsu wrestling, this is right up your alley. Certainly, Lacey is one of the more talented Brazilian jujitsu practitioners that we're going to see tonight, amateur or pro. And anybody from the wrestling factory, like uh, Josh Krasan is, they know they know how to go on the mats. Oh, good. nice exchange. Yeah, nice combination. I believe Krasan got the better of that with a left hook to the body, fouled with the right upstairs. Krasan looking a little tight in his boxing stance, very tense. But throwing some good body shots by Krasan as Lasich with double under hook, well, under over. And you know, we've, we've been mentioning all along that these guys are amateurs here. You know, this may be a time where Krasan says, you know what? I gotta work on my stand up. You know, what better time to do it than in the cage? Lasich with the good right. Krasan answers with the right to the body and a left on the way out. These two guys are connecting on their feet. Good left by Krasan. Again, that lead left hook, very effective. Lasich is having a hard time getting inside of uh, Krasan here. Every time he steps to him, Krasan unloads and starts throwing combinations. Oh, oh, there's a beautiful left. That same combination, right to the body, left hook connects to Lasich. And how tough is this guy? Yeah, that was a beautiful left hook. Hit right on the button and dropped uh, Lasich for just a second. John Cook said it would take a perfect shot to knock out Lasich, and there we almost saw it right there from Josh Krasan. Lasich coming back with some leather of his own. Woo, both these guys putting on a show, and here we, as usual, I'm completely wrong. Guys have a nice amount of stand up, and here Lasich oh, goes for the takedown. But Krasan, to his credit, right back to his feet, Lasich switched to a single. You see Krasan underhooking the right arm of Lasich. It's a tough position for Lasich here. Krasan looking to roll him over, almost trying to pin him if this were wrestling. And there's the wrestling background. I don't know if he wants to play in the guard of Josh Lasich. Yeah, Lasich did a good job recovering right back to guard. And you see, look at the look at the activeness of his of Lasich's guard, always bringing the legs up. Real high guard right in front of us here, John. Yep, trapping down the shoulders to avoid punishment. Excellent. This is just a stalemate position at this point as Krasan tries to figure out where he wants to go with this. Some short left punches in there, not effective. And referee Chad Trukovich, he's looking on, wondering if he's going to stand this thing up. But as a veteran, he understands when guys are working and when they're stalling. And there's almost 10 seconds left in this fight. Not a lot of time for Lasich to work. This might be when Krasan tries to open up a little bit with the offense and give the judges something to remember as they go into the break. And we go off to round two. That was a great first round of action. The NAAFS presents Rock and Rumble Live. Friday, August 17th at Jacobs Pavilion in Cleveland. Featuring the pride of Bloomfield, Mark Cherico. Two-time champion Isaiah the Beast Chapman. And Bellator superstar Jessica Evil Eye. Don't miss the official after party at McCarthy's downtown. Walking distance from Jacobs Pavilion. Rock and Rumble. Friday, August 17th at Jacobs Pavilion in Cleveland. Tickets available at Discount Drug Marts. Or simply log on to NAAFS.TV. The NAAFS. Where the battle begins. I think Lasich found out real quick when he had that double, it's not gonna be easy to take Krasan to the floor. No, and I actually think uh, Krasan was actually the one who took him down. He had an underhook, and he was able to throw. And there's a right by Lasich. Right by Lasich to close the distance and get a hold of him. Now Lasich is on top of Krasan. He's got, he's in half guard. Up against the cage. And half guard's a great place to strike it when you're on top. Very, very comfortable there. At least I, I love striking from half guard. Uh, Lasich may be a little more wanting to get this thing to the mount or full side control where he can start working his arsenal of submissions. This has got to be, and in, in, in here's just raw power trying to hook the arm by Krasan and, and roll him over. 
unable to, and it's it's tough against a BJJ guy with the credentials of Jonas Lasic to get him in an easy sweep like that. You're not going to muscle guys like that around, are no. you? No, because because Lasic is going to know when to drop his hips and when he's trying to pass in the mound, his hips get a little higher. But if he feels that he's getting pulled over, he's going to drop his hips real nice, just like he did. And more bad news for Krizan as they are in the corner of Evolve MMA. So Lasic can get instruction right there. And uh, here, oh, some forearm drops there. Yeah, I was going to say, Chad Trukovic immediately moved in, said make sure that those are not elbows. Which, no, they, and even the forearm is not legal. It is the wrist up. Now those who, those who in, my, in my opinion, were illegal blows then, John, because those are three or four forearms to the face of Josh Krizan. Although, these guys are fighting like pros, so. Does a good job, gets the forearm on the throat that's gonna flatten him out. And you'll see as he. Did we just see that again? Those look like forearm shots to me, and Krizan working to keep LASIK at bay, puts him in full guard. And Kurzan getting his legs up, looking for an arm bar, looking for a triangle. Not sure what he's looking for. It's not really a position to do much, but. I mean, typically guys in this point, they're gonna walk their feet along the cage and try to swing over, which he look, appears to do, but I just got a feeling that you are just not gonna do that to, uh, to Lasich. Lasich with a nice knee to the body, really controlling Kurzan here as he has for the first two minutes of this round. And it's been all Lasich. If, if nothing else position, and now he mounts some offense, driving down some right hands in the face of Krizan. Doesn't have a lot behind those punches, but you know, doing anything he can to soften him up. Got his feet on the hips and jumped up, beautiful. Last 10 seconds here, we are going to, uh, we're gonna see a round three. That was an interesting way to try to get a guy off you. Beautiful stuff. A lot of there's actually if you go back to the Ultimate Fighter 9, which Jason Dent was on, he had his opponent put his feet on on his hips, raised him up, and try to spin him for an arm bar, which was one of the more interesting uh, interesting submission attempts of that season. Yeah. Well, there's one more than one way to skin a cat, and Jason Dent sometimes tried to make him up as he went, as was part of his fighting style. Yeah, Dent has been around, scheduled to be on this card, injury took him out, and here we go. There's Lasich, what he did. Landed some punches, combination to get inside, then he got a body lock and took him down, and this right here, what we're looking at is the story of the second round. Clear, Without question. Clear round for Lasich, although Krizan did a nice job of preventing a whole lot of damage to be done, in any judge's eyes, when you're on top of somebody for two and a half rounds, controlling the fight, controlling the position, you're gonna win that round, and that was a clear round for Joss Lasich. Yeah, so we, I, I don't know about you, I've got this thing, one round apiece going into the third, and if I'm Joss Lasich, it's more of the same. Absolutely, and it, it, he's gotta get inside to close that distance, though. I, you know, he was, uh, as a wrestler of Krizan's, Caliber, he's not easy to take down, but a BJJ guy of Lasich's, once he gets you there, he can pretty much do what he wants with you to keep you there. And both guys look fresh. Cardio's not gonna be a problem for the final three minutes. First leg kick we've seen attempted. Joss Lasich just misses. Kick to the body off the end of that combination by Lasich, and a front kick. I'm gonna have to say, well, as he shoots in, should this fight get standing again, I got something to mention about those leg kicks. And this is interesting. He's almost got him in a, a crucifix here, and I don't know how, he, what Krizan is gonna do with this situ position. I don't know if he's putting an unbelievable amount of torque on the neck of Lasic. Yeah, his head a, is just trapped in there. One of the greatest knockouts ever in UFC was when Big Daddy Goodrich got his opponent in a crucifix and just threw elbows. No question. That was before the refs knew they were allowed to step in and stop the fight. It was good eight, nine uh, punches, or elbows rather, directly to his opponent's cranium. That did not have to happen. Here's Krizan, you know, in the, the wrestling, he was able to switch it and take top control. You know, wrestlers, or the fighters are always looking to finish the fight, but in a close match like this, 
you know, advantage Krizan if he can stay on top here. We saw early in the first round when Krizan got on top, it was towards the end of the round, but he was unable to mount any offense from this position. And Lasic is looking to get in. He's looking to get a sweep here, or at least get back to full guard to where he can start working his game. Just notice the bit of the paradox that is Josh Krizan with the boxing shorts with the Wrestling Factory logo on it. Guess you can't wear a singlet out here though, can you, Jim? No, 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 no. <laughs> Nor would we want him to. All right, so right now, Lasich has him in full guard. This should be his world. You know, Krizan's gonna wanna stay heavy on top like he's doing. Here he goes, now he's getting some offense mounted here. So far, he's just been content almost to hold position on him, but he needs to start landing some punches to let the refs know, hey, I'm taking this round. Here he he's gonna start working a triangle. Well, in the, the, the corner of Evolve, Josh Lasich's coach is telling him he's open for a sweep. There he goes, as you mentioned. Super high, nice high guard. Squeezing the shoulders of a Krizan together. Very difficult. And he's Ooh. gonna get an arm. <laughs> Almost an up kick by Lasich too. Less than 30 seconds here. Krizan looks to be a little tired, but not too tired to wrestle. This is a tight round. I think Lasich can steal this round. Get another, oh, beautiful two piece. And he keeps going. Off now, and they're both throwing. Look at Krizan and Lachis. Throwing it under the left by Krizan. These guys are literally toe to toe, just throwing. And, and Lachis, round. unbelievable. And the crowd appreciates it. Everybody giving both fighters a, a big round of applause. What an ending to that fight. Wow, terrific action in the last 30 seconds. Both of them turning it up. Lasich started by winning it, the winning the battle on the feet, really connecting it as just as I thought if Krizan was out of it, he starts swinging back and connecting with fists of his own. What a terrific finish, finish to a three round war. Look at these guys go here, John. Both of them just connecting and throwing. There's a big right by Krizan, an uppercut, grazes, the, and then Lasich with a couple more. There's a grazer. Left and right, great action by these two. Well, for all the wrestling that I, we expected, the best parts of this fight were their stand-up. Certainly, these guys are getting some applause and some love from this crowd in Cleveland, and they deserve every bit of it for just giving a terrific showing, three-round battle. John? I think, I think both guys knew that they was coming down to this final round and they just had to lay it, lay it all on the line. Well, Jazz has the official results. Let's send it up to him and we'll find out who wins. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of fighting, we go to the judges' scorecards for your winner. We have a split decision. Judge Mike Berry scores at 29-28 for Lasic. Judge Dan Maltz scores at 29-28 for Krizan. Judge Brian Monroe scores at 29-28 for your winner by split decision, Josh, the Romanian Hammer, Chris on. I'm standing here with your winner, Josh Krizan. Unbelievable fight. You clearly won round one, looked like he got round two, and then round three, it was anybody's, anybody's game. And boy, you guys just were swinging at the end, toe to toe. Let's talk about that. How do you feel about that fight? Uh, I feel tired. He was, uh, he was strong. Um, his stamp was okay. His round game was pretty good. I was expecting a lot of jujitsu. It was more of a stand fight, I guess. Uh, he was tough. That's it. Well, you come out of a place called the Wrestling Factories, but Wrestling Factory, but clearly the Carrazzo brothers have been working on your stand up. How comfortable did you feel? I felt pretty good on feet. I really did. And that's what I was expecting to be most of the fight, but he's got a fast shot. He took me down in the second round, so he was good. You're tired, my man. What's next for you? 
Um, I'm gonna take a break, and uh, I'll come back and see what happens. Finally, anybody you want to thank tonight? I want to thank everybody who came out to see me. My cousins. Thanks, guys. It means a lot. My family, for sure. My brothers, sisters, everybody. My cornerman, Vincent, Brian, Dominic, and Mike. Thanks, guys. Well, give it up for your winner, Josh Krizan. More NAAFS cage fighting coming right up. AFS presents Caged Vengeance Live. Saturday, August 4th at One Wellness Sports and Health in East Lake, Ohio. Don't miss Bone Saul George Comer, Terry Blackwell, and Frank the Tank Caraballo defends his title. World class professional mixed martial arts. Saturday, August 4th at One Wellness Sports and Health in East Lake, Ohio. Tickets available at Discount Drug Marts or simply log on to NAAFS.tv. Ladies and gentlemen, our next fight is brought to you by Intimidation Clothing. Stop by the Intimidation Clothing booth, the table set up out front for all their latest in MMA designs, and also brought to you by Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. And now, making his way to the cage, please welcome Kama Worthy. Well, Ryan, here comes Kama Worthy, eight and two. This is his professional debut. He burst onto the scene here in the NAAFS with a nice win over Kenny Jackson, and he absolutely manhandled a very tough Joey Goyette at Rock and Rumble in 2003. Yeah, he's coming off a four-fight win streak, and 4-0 oh in the NAAFS last year alone. As mentioned, the national title winner in Kama Worthy very tough test in his pro debut against George Comer, but if the hype is coming in right behind this guy. Absolutely. There is no question whatsoever that Team PTT out of Pittsburgh, those guys have really burst onto the scene, done a great job here. You know, he KO'd Frank Sloan at Night of Champions. He is definitely a striker, but he can defend the takedown. Well, and he has three wins by rear naked choke, so he knows what he's doing on the ground. He's going to need to defend the takedown against George Comer. Both of his losses, uh, coming in with an 8-2 record, both losses were by decision. So he's not a guy who's easily finished either. No, absolutely not. It'll be interesting to see how he reacts to the level of wrestling that George Comer is going to bring. You know, George Comer, four-year starter, varsity at Mount Union College. So this is going to be an interesting chess match between Kama Worthy and George Comer. Yeah. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the cage, please welcome his opponent tonight, George Comer. And here comes George Comer, and you can hear from the crowd, they are behind him, no doubt about it. George Comer currently lives in Cleveland, originally from Monville, Ohio, just east of Cleveland. In fact, you're quite a ways, even east of Menor, Ohio. And he comes in here, incredible wrestling pedigree, and you see right behind him, Jason Dynamite Dent, UFC veteran, star of the Ultimate Fighter 9, I believe it was. And there's no doubt, George Comer is prepared mentally and physically for this fight. 
Yeah, well, when you talk about mentally, a big advantage he's going to have over Kamal Werther is he's been here before. He's done the pro thing. He's gone five rounds for three minutes. Kamal Worthy can't say that. Yes, absolutely. As we take a look at our Tim Lally Chevrolet tail of the tape. George Comer, two years the elder, although he will be turning 28 in nine days. Uh, he's looking for an early birthday present here. Kamal Worthy, the striker, with a four and a half inch reach advantage. Both them make it in the uh, 155 weight class. This is going to be a classic wrestler versus strike up style matchup. Without question. And, and George knows. I think George's best, best game plan is going to be don't try to shoot from too far away. Get in range, throw a few punches, and then use your, your wrestling. A lot of wrestlers do make that mistake, John, and you're right. They'll, they won't set up the shot. They'll be too far away. What I like about George Gomer is he's not afraid to exchange and get inside, and where he's dangerous is dirty boxing in the clinch, and he's also good at trips and takedowns up against the cage. And he is unbelievably strong. There's no question about it. This guy's in top, top condition for this I, fight. I spoke to him before. I said, George, you're looking big. What are you in? And he's like, well, I'm definitely 170. Yeah, so there we go. He'll be the bigger fight in the cage here tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight is brought to you by Intimidation Clothing and also Bud Light. Three rounds in the NAAFS Professional Series Lightweight Division. And now, introducing fighting out of the John B. Lennon red corner, this fighter's MMA record sits at eight and two, standing five feet 11 inches tall, weighing 153 and one half pounds, representing Team PTT, fighting out of the steel town of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He is the 2011 NAAFS Amateur Series Lightweight National Champion, Come on. The Death Star Worthy! And now his opponent fighting out of the intimidation clothing blue corner. This fighter's impressive MMA record sits with nine wins and only one defeat. Standing five feet seven inches tall, weighing 154 and one half pounds, representing Griffin Roll MMA, he is a two-time NAAFS Amateur Series National Champion, fighting out of Montville, Ohio. Bonesaw George Comer. Your referee is Chad Chukovich. So Ryan, interesting matchup. We've got the 2009 NAAFS lightweight amateur champion against the 2011 lightweight champion, but Comer also won the welterweight amateur title in 2010 going up a weight class. Well, if uh, amateur titles mean anything, Comer would have the advantage, but they're both pros now, although that is, uh, just shows the level of competition they're both facing, especially Kama Worthy in his first, in his pro debut, to take on a guy of George Comer's skill level. And you can see Kama's definitely the little, much more comfortable striker right now. And a very unorthodox striker. You see, he doesn't hold his hands typically where you would expect. Comes at you from different angles. Very active with his hands. And George looks uh, a, a little, little tight. I was going to say, a little stiff. And, and more more lunging with his punches. You know, and again, we talk about throwing combinations. And as of this point, Comer is only throwing a one punch out there. Nice kick. Nice outside leg kick by Comer. And there's the double. And Kama Com defends it. And George keeps going for it. This is where I was saying. You know, I don't know if Kama has come up against the caliber wrestler that George Comer is. That was, and he's gonna pass the hand. He's passing Kama Worthy's hand to his own right hand to hold it behind his back. If George can get this, Kama Worthy's gonna be in a little bit of trouble because the entire right side of his body is gonna be exposed. And George is reaching for it. You see him digging, trying to and connect it, and he's got it. He's, he's got it, yep, and now this is gonna be Kama's gonna really have to work to get that hand free because George is gonna have a, basically a free shot. 
Yeah, and there it is, the left hand from George. There's nothing on the right side of Kama Worthy's body to defend this because he's holding the hand behind his back. Yep, and George, he's unable to get off the, a lot of damage there, but definitely George. scoring points. Well, look how far he's pulled Kama Worthy's hand all the way to the other side of his body. And these are just unabated punches. If George can get his head on the right, and there you go. Now he's gonna create his head on one side and just pound yep. Kama Worthy into it. And you see those are affecting him and that's why Kama Worthy's putting that hand up. But what he needs to do is get his right hand free. And George content right now. He has absolutely no desire to pass half guard. He'll just stay here and take Take his shots. Hey, why not? They're free. And he's going to the body also. Look at he's just tenderizing the ribs there. And there's a nice hard left to the face of Kama Worthy. The, uh, we mentioned George Comer and the weight gain he has, but he is an extremely strong 155er. Absolutely. I mean, he came in, he came in won the 170 pound welterweight title, um, took out Nick Killian in the semifinals, then beat Josh Oppenheimer, who, by the way, that guy's nickname has to be the atomic bomb. <laughs> J. Robert Oppenheimer was head of the Manhattan Project. <laughs> For you people who may not be history nerds, thanks. Yeah. Sorry about that. And as we continue, we're this is over two minutes where George has been able to keep his hand secured. And as I say that, Kama Worthy gets his hand out. And George looks, it passes over to the side. Nice. He's able to keep Kama, keep Kama down. Does a good job. Make sure Kama cannot get back to full guard. And what was impressive with that is the scrambling ability of George as he passed to half. Kama tried to wheel out, spin out. He just flipped to the other side and maintained half control. Side mount just on the other side. Looking to go to the north-south position here. Kama Worthy holding onto that uh, reverse headlock. Yeah, I mean, at, th at but, this but point, that's not nothing but a schoolyard bully technique. And, and at this point, the only thing it's doing is wearing out and tiring his arms because George is still operating, doing all the offense he wants, even with his head trapped like that. And now he's got it out. And I can tell you, I've, when I roll with George Comer, when he gets inside control on you, man, is that a pain in the butt because he is just... Great, you know, and now he's got great mat awareness. Sorry, Jenny, got the, the left arm of Kama Worthy pinned. Kama almost reversed it, and the balance of George Comer kept himself on top of Kama Worthy. 40 seconds, 40 seconds. Unlike so many wrestlers we've seen, John, in MMA, when they get on top, they're riding it out, riding out the round. George Comer has been active the entire time and landing punches, landing elbows landing offense without question and that's the that's what george comer does he's just got such great mat awareness that he is going to stay on top and very little of what you're going to do is to get you off him and here's some short get elbows him, get him off of you excuse me and you see the mouse on underneath the right eye of comma worthy that was the side where george comer spent two minutes of free shots essentially pounding the face of comma worthy 10-9 round george comer and for George Comer, this is just another day at the office, uh, taking the opportunity to, once he got the takedown, secure the arm, and to be quite blunt, just beat up Kama Worthy for five minutes. Kama Worthy stands in the corner. George Comer squats down to get his breath. But certainly, John, the, the stamina that was taken out of anybody was Kama Worthy because he had to carry 170, 170 plus pounds of George Comer throughout the entire round. And here you see it again where he's got that arm trapped and it's just free shots. They weren't doing that much damage, but you add them up, enough of them. Well, individually they may not have, but if you see the underneath the right eye of Kama Worthy, they did damage. There is an enormous egg size contusion underneath the right eye of Kama Worthy. And here we go. They agree to touch him up. And I think we're gonna see more of the same from George Comer. Look at George uh, as he throws the leg kick, keeping the hand up, protecting that side of his head. He's a little wild on his kicks. But, it, you know, even five minutes into it, after the first round, George is such an excitable guy. I mean, look, he looks like a, it's the last round he's ever gonna fight in his life. He's jumping around and... Well, when he fought Clint Musser, you know, George, I think George came to fight and Clint came to wrestle and you know, Clint did a great job. Every time George threw a punch, Clint ducked under, was able to take George down. 
And, you know, I think George, that has just been eating at him. Eating, 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 just drives him. And when you talked to him earlier tonight, there is no doubt he's coming out of this laying it all in the cage. There will not be one ounce of anything George is going to regret as, right. as, as, insofar as his effort went. Sure. Well, Kama Worthy, for, for such a young guy, 25 years old, he's very mature, making his pro debut, but you talked to him beforehand. And he, he, very nice guy, head on his shoulders, has a maturity beyond his age. Nice body kick by George Comer. What that does is, you know, this is new, new Grant Waters for him. Second round after a first five minute, but he looks as composed as he did when the fight started. And that's the only bad thing I've seen George do so far is he, he shot when he, did, he should not have. And I think Kama's a little hesitant to throw his strikes knowing George could just change levels and take him down. Well, interesting, great point. We have not seen Kama Worthy let go any leg kicks in this round so far. And a big reason for that is as soon as the leg comes up, I can see George shooting in, trying to take him down. George is also doing a nice job of feigning and changing levels. He'll drop down as if he's gonna shoot, come back up and throw punches. They exchange inside leg kicks. I like something Kama did. He just threw as though he was shadow boxing an uppercut, just to maybe remind George, hey, you come shooting in wild, look what's waiting for you. Right. And he caught George there, but th caught George on the way in with the hook. And it, George just ran right through it. Yep. And that's the thing with George Comer, any wrestler, but especially George, it's gonna be shoot, shoot, reshoot. He is gonna get his takedown. And now we're seeing more of the same in round one. George is working for that hand again, and he, he, I think he's gonna get it again. He, he does have the the hand secured again, except it's the opposite hand. Right, because the other side of his face needs a mouse. Right, well, let's even it out. And here comes a throw. Nice knee by Kama Worthy, but I have a feeling he's gonna drop his hips and take him for a ride. And in this situation, you'd almost expect him to block that left leg of Kama Worthy, because there's no post, there's no, nothing he can do once that leg's taken out to prevent himself from going to the mat good knee to the thigh and for anybody who's never trained man you take those knees to the thigh or those leg kicks I would rather get punched in the face than take a, a, a good leg kick or a solid knee to the thigh. Kama Worthy defends a double leg and George switches to a single and gets him down now hops to his back. Beautiful. Great transition wrestling by uh, George Comer looks to take his back and rolls he's got both hooks in and he's got to be careful not to cross his ankles because Kama Worthy there's a submission there. Sure. So George, in all but one of his fights, he has gone the distance and he's looking to reverse that trend right now. He's not under the chin, but he's got a minute 10 to go. Now oh, he's now, under the chin. Now, he, here we go. Oh yeah, he's got Kama he's stretched got out. Stretched and bent and he's got a tap here. And there he's got is. a beautiful job, George Coma. Reverses a trend where his first fight he won by TKO, his next nine went to decision. Now he gets a rear naked choke. Beautiful jujitsu, and I'll tell you what, Kama Worthy's disappointed, and I'm not even gonna try to be unbiased. I train with George, he's a personal friend. I'm so happy for him, congratulations, George. And, and really, for George Comer, this was a showcase fight for him. The Clint Muster fight, as you mentioned, he came to fight, he didn't get the opportunity to put all his skills on display. What you saw here from George Comer tonight was a guy who can stand, a guy who can take it to the ground, a guy who can defend strikes, and then finally a guy who can operate uh, BJJ Jiu-Jitsu and finish a fight when he needs to. That's always Very been one nice of, job by George Comer. It's always been one of those things hanging around his head is the inability to finish, labeled as a wrestler. Well, he's gonna put some of those critics to bed now after this fantastic finish against an excellent fighter in Kama Worthy. Without question, and both guys show a lot of class. Let's send it up to Jazz and make it official. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight ends with a tap out due to a rear naked choke at three minutes and 58 seconds of round number two. Your winner, Bone Saw, George Comer.
I'm standing here with your winner, George Comer. George, you reversed the trend. Uh -oh, don't take down. You take down Comer Worthy, not me. Your, your first fight you won by TKO. Your next nine went to decision. How good does it feel to get a finish tonight? Man, I mean, hello, NAS fans. I'm Bonesaw George Comer. You might remember me from like two years ago. So uh, it's nice to be back here and get acquainted. So, uh, but it feels great. Good, I know you put in a ton of time, Jason Dent, all the guys up at Griffin Raw. Who else do you need to thank tonight? Well, uh, I'm gonna make this quick. Jason, my man, so much work, Ryan Lowe's. God bless you. AJ, Donnie, this goes out to my team, Griffin Raw. All right, let's pick it up from here, baby. You know, I felt like I spent a lot of time uh, preparing for this. He's the Death Star. Ask my sister, I've been a Jedi since I've been three. So, uh, you know, his defenses were tight, but there's a ventilation shaft just a little bit larger than a womp rat. Had to fly down a narrow corridor and shoot it in there to the main power grid. Got it. Great fighter and huge nerd. <laughs> What's next for you, George? Um, you know what, I'm here to stay busy. Me and Jason uh, made that um, decision earlier this year. I've been kind of quiet, so we're gonna stay busy this year. I want you to come back so I can take you down since you're the leader of the Sturmacking army. Done. I'm calling out John Sturmack. Kalikas, make it happen. Give it up for your winner, Bonesaw George Comer. More NAAFS cage fighting coming right up. We're wrapping up here at NAAFS Fight Night in the Flats 8. And boy, Ryan, when we said at the outset, classic striker versus grappler, that's just what we got. Well, George Comer came in as a wrestler and he left as a complete mixed martial artist. All the skills were on display and a terrific submission win for him over a very talented Kama Worthy. Tonight's not the last time the NAAFS will see either of these guys. Absolutely, both studs. I'm looking forward to see both of them fight again. For Ryan Cavanaugh, I'm John Sturmack. We'll see you next time.